Some time back I've made a tutorial about how inverters work and we also made a very crude inverter as an example that was able to power up a light bulb. The shape of the signal of that inverter was something like this, a square wave. But if you look at any home outlet signal you will see it is a sinusoidal wave, usually of 50 or 60 Hz. So in this tutorial I will try to explain how we could get a sine voltage inverter. Please have in mind that this is just an example, in order for us to learn. The circuit and the results are not perfect, and also very important, the output might be dangerous, since high voltage AC could hurt you. The circuit is not very powerful, the shape of the sine wave is not perfect and the entire circuit is made for tests, so if you really want a performance inverter, consider buying a commercial one. We will look on how to use a so called SPWM signal and with that get the sinusoidal shape. How to connect the power MOSFET to the transformer and how to smooth out the output. The switching is made out with an Arduino, so we could control the frequency and the SPWM signal quite easy. Finally I will also try to add some feedback to this crude circuit and see the results. Before we start make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also thanks to all my patrons for the support. So let's get started. Get professional made PCBs from GLC PCB for very low prices. And now the good news is that the price is the same for any color of the solar mask. The finish quality is very good, the precision as well and good delivery time. For just $2 you can get 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm of any color now. You have green, red, yellow, white, blue and black options to choose from. So upload your files to GLC PCB and order the PCBs now and take advantage of this offer. What's up my friends, welcome back. What we have to do first is to see how this SPWM signal works. I'm sure that you are pretty used with normal PWM signal. This is a type of control where you can change the width of a square shaped signal, as you can see here. But if you want to achieve a sine shape at the output, we have to map the width of these pulses very fast and increase the width each time with an exponential curve. Let's see this with a little bit of more details. Ok so here we have the output of our SPWM circuit, which will have a capacitor connected, so it will have to charge and discharge and that will take some time. Now if I apply a normal PWM signal of 50% duty cycle, this is what will happen. The output will start charging the capacitor, and after some time it reaches fully charge and it will stay that way till the PWM signal gets low. So we will have the same square signal at the output but a little bit more round around the edges. Ok so now let's apply the so called SPWM signal, which will look like this. The first pulse will have a very small duty cycle, let's say 1%, so the output will only have time to charge a little bit, but very fast will make another pulse of let's say 5% duty cycle, so the output will charge a little bit more. Then we apply a let's say 10% duty cycle, the output will charge a little bit more and then with a 25 duty cycle till we get up to 100%. This will create a very smooth charging curve of the output. So giving the right values of duty cycle we can get a very sinusoidal shape at the output. If we want both the positive and negative sides of the wave, we will use two transistors and one will create the positive part of the signal and the other one the negative part. So I upload the code that I found on the internet that creates an SPWM signal on pins 9 and 10. The code is very simple. We create a vector that will have all the widths of our SPWM signal and in the interruption section we go to this vector and we change the analog signal width on each loop till we go through all the values. I've connected this on my oscilloscope and I enable only one channel for now. The signal is very fast and we have to stop it. If I zoom in we can see that the width is getting bigger and bigger by the time, just as expected. The width increases, then we get here where we have the full width and then the width decreases till we get to zero once again. Ok so now I enable the two channels, and as you can see when one is high the other one is off and vice versa, and if we connect this to a MOSFET bridge it will give us the positive and negative sides of the sinusoidal wave. Ok guys so this is the schematic for this part, where we have no feedback. I will use an Arduino, some N channel MOSFETs, also we will need some MOSFET drivers, 
we also need some diodes, resistors and a transformer. The transformer must be a divided one, otherwise we will need an H-bitch control in order to get both negative and positive sides of the wave. And by divided I mean that we have three inputs for the primary coil, which are the middle and both ends of the coil. In this way we can apply a positive voltage on the middle pin, and by switching which end of the coil is connected to ground, we can create inverted polarity magnetic fields, and by that we can get inverted polarity voltage at the output of the transformer. If you have a normal transformer, you will need 4 MOSFETs in the shape of an H-bridge in order to control the polarity of the voltage. Ok, so I connect the circuit on my breadboard, and I connect pins 9 and 10 to the driver input. Then the driver is connected through these two resistors to both MOSFETs, since this is a dual driver. At the same time I'm using two MOSFETs in parallel, so we could get more power. Ok, so now I power up the Arduino and I connect 12 volts at the input, and I analyze the results on the oscilloscope. But as you can see the output seems to be just noise, and the results are not good. That's because a crucial part is missing, the output capacitor. Now this capacitor can be a normal one. It must be a non-polarized and high voltage capacitor like these ones. I will use this big capacitor that I have from an old circuit. So I add the capacitor at the output and I power back the circuit, and now we have our sine wave, which I have to say has a pretty decent sinusoidal shape. It has 50 Hz and 310 peak to peak. At the same time I connect the main input from my home, to compare the shape. I stop the oscilloscope and as you can see, we have a pretty decent shape but it's not perfect. The green line is the home outlet, and the yellow line is the inverter output. Ok, so let's see something more, now I have the inverter output and the SPWM signals. As you can see, when digital pin 9 is with the SPWM signal, we have the positive side of the AC output, and when digital pin 10 has the SPWM signal, we have the negative side. Also, if we get close enough, we can see how the width of the pulses is getting bigger or smaller. Ok, so now we have our sinusoidal inverter, but we don't want only the sine shape. We also want a good peak to peak voltage. Here in Spain the main outlet is of 230 RMS AC, or 350 peak to peak. To control the peak to peak value, we have to increase or decrease the DC input, so the magnetic field inside of the transformer gets higher or lower and by that the AC output will change as well. Here as you can see if I increase or decrease the DC input for my power supply, the AC sine wave of my inverter changes as well. But why we want to change the output instead of leaving it at a fixed value? Well, this is why. If I add a load to the output, in this case a light bulb, as you can see the signal changes shape and the peak to peak value. Also the light is not fully turned on. So, depending on the load, we should adapt the DC input value, so we should always have the same peak to peak at the output. As you can see, when I increase the input, the sine wave increases as well, and the light will turn on. I've also tested this with an incandescent light bulb of 60 watts. Ok guys, so to adjust the voltage we will need a feedback. This is a schematic that I'm thinking for the feedback. Once again guys, this is just experimental. I don't really recommend any of these circuits for professional use. Since there are too many connections for the breadboard, I've designed a small PCB and order it, and I'm sharing the files for this PCB below this video. Ok, so to read the output we first need to rectify the signal, using a full bridge rectifier with these 4 diodes. Then we need to add a capacitor to smooth the value and the voltage divider with these resistors, so it will get below 5 volts so the Arduino could read that. As you can see, with the green line, now I change the input value and the output from the voltage divider changes from 0V to 5V, and we could read this with the Arduino, and then connect the Arduino to a boost converter circuit, and by that we could change the DC input value, and that will change the AC value at the output. Ok, so since I don't have the boards that I've designed yet, I'm using this boost converter module to change the input and simulate the results. I connect my supply to a fixed value of 12V. Now I use the potentiometer to adjust the DC voltage and by that I will change the output peak to peak value, till I get to around 300 peak to peak. So the feedback will detect the output change and inform that to the microcontroller, that will change a PWM signal connected to a boost converter, that will change the DC input and by that we adjust the inverter output. So that's how the feedback would work. 
When I receive the boards I will make more tests, so stay tuned for that. The frequency value is fixed, so we don't need a feedback for that. Ok guys, I hope that you now know how the SPWM signal is used to get the sinusoidal wave. How to rectify the output and read the feedback, and how you could adjust the frequency in the code, and the output value with the DC converter at the input. Once again guys, this is just an experimental example, in order for you to learn how this signal works. The power is quite low, around 50 watts, so it's enough to power a light bulb, or maybe a small charger for phones or laptops, but nothing bigger than that, or high tech. Anyway, I hope that you like this project. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. So thanks again and see you later guys.